Ah, nothing like a spit shine on brass to really bring out that luster. There we go. Hey, do you guys remember the mudroom renovation I did a while back? Well, it's right behind you. And in this same space was this cabinet here, which previously still had two drawers up top, but down below were two doors. Behind those doors were shelves and pull-out drawers, which really served no purpose, very difficult to access. So, did a complete renovation, ripped out all that down below, made new drawer fronts, all flat panel shaker style. Now we have two big drawers, full access to everything, new coat of paint, I think much more functional. So, if you want to see how I transform this whole space, here we go. And like most cabinet or built-in projects, this one started with milling up some rough maple for all the drawer fronts. This is about four quarter, a little over an inch in rough form. So I'm going to mill it down flat, first by face joining and then running through my planer to get two flat parallel surfaces. I'm bringing this down to about seven eighths of an inch, which is how I like to create most of my cabinetry, give it a little more beef. So with the measurements I took on site, I'm going to build a real life two scale reenactment of the face frame that is in place. That way I can size my four drawer fronts exactly and I don't have to worry about whether they might fit or might not fit. This way I'll know. Now this did take, I don't know, about 10 or 15 minutes, but to me it was well worth the time. So I just took some scrap plywood, ripped it all down to the current widths of the face frame and then fit it all together by screwing it to my <laughs> Beautiful workbench. Then I could get started ripping down all my rails and styles to width. You might be able to see my little chicken scratch on there. It says two and three sixteenths strong. So I'm leaving myself a little bit extra to head over to the joiner to clean up the saw marks. And then a little bit extra also for when I cut these down to final size with a three thirty second inch reveal. And then over at the bench, I just roughly lay out all my rails and styles to maximize the use of all my material. And yes, I am wearing a hat today, which is rare. Anytime you see a guy that age wearing a baseball cap, 10 to 1, plugs. <laughs> well, Jerry, I'll admit it is falling out faster than I'd like, but I have not resorted to plugs. So now with all my pieces cut to rough length, I am running them all through the planer at the same time to make sure they are the exact same width. And now to make sure they are the exact same length, I'm attaching a little stop block here with some CA glue to my zero clearance sled. These little guys are just for the small drawers up top. And now I can start inserting them in my pseudo face frame, like little puzzle pieces, and then back to the miter saw to cut some of my other pieces using a different stop block to maintain the same accuracy with those. Now, since I will be using tongue and groove joinery for these drawer frames, I need to make sure to leave enough material for the actual tongue. Unlike the mudroom project where I completely fucking oh. forgot. So this time I actually wrote it on there, the length plus three quarters on each end, but my math was wrong and I wrote inch and three quarters instead of an inch and a half, but I did cut it with an inch and a half extra. So no need to worry. And yet again, employing the use of a stop block to make sure they are all the same length. I make those cuts and then head back to the bench to double check, make sure they are all oversized as they should be, that extra three quarters of an inch on each end. And then I could head to the table saw and set up a dado stack to start cutting the grooves and then the tongues. So using a 5 16 spacer because I have 7 8 of an inch thickness stock and I want a quarter inch groove in the middle and that leaves me 5 16 on each side now is this the best way to make sure that your groove is in the middle no you really want to run it through one side flip it around and run it through the other to make sure that it is guaranteed to be in the center but since i wanted a quarter inch groove and i was using a quarter inch dado stack i just let the math guide me and it did work out okay and then using this incredibly fancy and super cool feather board that Harvey Industrial sent me to try out. I got all my pieces run through, kept them nice and tight against the fence. Notice the on the fly one hand tension adjustment there. That is really cool. And here's a little peek from the rear in case you were wondering what that might look like. And there they are all lined up, rails and styles ready for tongues. And to make the tongues for the tongue and groove, Jerry is going to supervise me using my little sled here. So you can see I have a zero clearance slot already cut at a quarter of an inch. Now, since I want my tongue to be three quarters of an inch long, I'm going to use a three quarter inch setup block, set up a stop block 
clamp that to my sled, and then that will be the cut I use to establish my inner shoulder, which is the final length of my tenon or tongue. So I know once I hit that stop block, I've gone far enough, and then I can just use both sides. First, we'll do a test cut, make sure I have the height right, and magically, I got it on the first one. So I'll continue with the rest of the tongues that need to be cut. You can see this one ends up whittling down to something kind of tiny on the small drawers up front. And then I could bring all my pieces over to my, well, nope, Jerry's kind of in the way there. Hey, little man. Yeah, sorry to disturb you. Then I could dry assemble all of these and make sure they actually fit together. And more importantly, make sure they fit into their designated spots within the face frame. Those look good. And now we can rest. All right, for the drawer panels, I'm using half inch MDF. Why? Because it takes paint great. It's stable. It's flat. It smells. Okay, it doesn't smell good. Now to get the size or length of my panel, I'm going to take from tongue to tongue. That gives me 14 and 7 16th. So I'm going to cut that a little bit shy of that. Make sure I have a little bit of wiggle room, roughly an eighth of an inch smaller. So a 16th of an inch on each side. You don't want to be perfectly tight in there. You want to give it a little bit of elbow room to move around. Now for the big panels, I did the same thing. Took my measurement from tongue to tongue and then cut those to length on the miter saw. And to cut the rabbit out of the back, I am using my L fence and a dado stack here. First, I'm gonna test the fit. That looks good. Ultimately, I want this panel to be flush with the back of the drawer front and then it sets back in about a quarter of an inch from the front of the drawer aka a recessed panel. So if you just use a quarter inch panel in your groove, there's going to be a gap between the back of your drawer front and the front of your drawer box. And when you put your hardware on and tighten that down, it will pull in that panel and cause it to buckle. So you'd have to fill it with something or you can just use half inch MDF like I've demonstrated here if that's easier for you. And as you can see, I cut my rabbit about an eighth of an inch deeper in all the way around than I needed to. This allows me to move the panel around during glue up. It also allows for any future expansion and contraction with any of the parts. So with that first drawer front dry assembled, I could pop it in place and then head back to the table saw and continue on with the process with the other drawer fronts. Now with everything set up with the perfect height and depth, and width, I could just fly through these. And then it was all about a thorough dry assembly to make sure everything fits nice and tight, fits in the space, and then we could start the glue up. Now I'm not going to size these perfectly with my reveals all the way around until everything is glued and sanded, and then I can make my final cuts. You can see here, I'm just using this little pry bar to center that panel, as I mentioned before. Couple of clamps, and we'll set that aside. And then the following day, with a change of shirt, I could release all these drawer fronts from the clamps and start sanding everything, make sure all my joints are nice and smooth, make sure I get off any pencil marks or any marks from the planer. And this is where a drum sander would really come in handy, but I just don't have the room. So until then, I'll keep sanding by hand. Now I'll do one final dry fit check. All looks decent. And now we can move on to making the drawer boxes. Now, typically I farm out my drawer boxes. Number one, because it's way easier that way, but more importantly, it's way cheaper. The amount of labor that I have to put into making these drawers, never mind the materials, far exceeds what I would ever pay for a drawer box. Now, these drawer boxes are large, they're about 32 inches long by 12 inches deep, and it would probably cost about $100 per drawer to have these made out of maple or birch and dovetailed and coated with lacquer. Now, that sounds like a lot up front, but when you think about it, these drawer boxes took me almost two days to make. From getting all the material cut to size, to machine set up, to doing all the joinery and gluing them up, to cutting all the notches, and then ultimately spraying them, sanding them, spraying them, sanding them, spraying them again. And I'm using Baltic birch plywood, five eighths of an inch thick, which is about $100 a sheet. So let's say my labor rate is $50 an hour. I would have to make these drawer boxes in two hours from start to finish in order for it to cost me the same as farming them out. The only possible downside of farming them out is lead time. Some companies could be two to four weeks. Others are only five to seven days. So if you need them now, then you're kind of stuck. But if you can wait a little bit, farming them out is the best way to go. All right, hopefully that breakdown helps some people. 
Next up was to sand the inside of all of these boxes so I didn't have to do it later. Now I'm just gonna use traditional pocket hole joinery to join these because the drawer fronts will cover all of that. So I think we've all used pocket holes before. You know how they work. Use a jig, use a drill bit, drill a hole, and move on. And then the fun part of gluing and clamping up. And by the way, at this point, I was really cursing myself for not farming these things out. But in my own defense, no, I don't have one. I was forced to live with my poor decision. Now, just to give you a little bit of insight into the actual box construction here, you can see the back panel I cut short. That way I could slide the drawer bottom in and didn't have to glue up the bottom with the box itself. The reason I wanted to do that was when I spray these, I wanted to get to the inside unencumbered because if you spray a drawer box with a bottom in there, most of the time you'll get a lot of spray back as that finish kind of ricochets around and you get a mess. So before I could spray them, I sanded everything nice and smooth. As you can see, my hat is back on. Forgot to shower that day, apparently. And then rather than easing all those edges by hand and risking any nasty plywood splinters, I grab my trim router with a chamfer bit in there and clean them up nice and then come back and clean any rogue spots up by hand. The final step before finish was to double check that my drawer bottoms were cut to size properly and according to my tape measure we should be good. So I took the bottoms and I like to round over those corners a little bit. It just seems to make it a lot easier during final assembly that there's no sharp corners to snag on when you're sliding that panel into the groove. And then it was time to spray some finish. I'm using General Finish's high performance top coat in satin. As you can see, it was a pretty windy day. I'm not sure if this helped or hurt me, but coating went on pretty quick. I really like this product. I put on three coats and then it was time for final assembly. I could slide that drawer bottom in. And yes, I do glue this in. This is all plywood. I don't have to worry about expansion and contraction. So I'll clamp that bottom to the back and then drive some screws home to secure it. And I also popped a few staples in down near the front just to hold that in place until the glue sets up. And I'm using Bloom undermount soft close slides on these drawers. So I'm using this little Rockler jig, which helps you get your screw holes in at the perfect angle and the perfect location. So once I drill those holes, I can pop in the little locking clips. These are inset locking clips, so I get ultimate adjustment left, right, up, and down. You know, a lot of people don't pre-drill holes on these, which is fine, but most of the time when I don't pre-drill those holes, I'll end up with a little splitting or cracking. So this jig also flips around and drills the little hole for the tab in the back of the slides, which is great. Now, if you recall, I didn't trim down my drawer fronts to the final size. They were made exact fit. And before I just haphazardly created my 332nd reveal all the way around, I wanted to bring it on site and double check the fit just to make sure once everything was painted and I went to install them that there wasn't an oh shit moment. So getting the drawers out and the doors off, that was pretty easy. But now it was time to do a little demo. So since I am maintaining the upper rail and the bottom rail for these bottom drawers, I wanted to score the paint on that and then I could break out the heavy artillery and go to work with the Sawzall. Yes, I should have been wearing ear protection here, but I forgot it. So I just stuffed a little, nope. I didn't stuff anything in there. But what I did confirm was a nice good fit on these drawers so I could take them back to the shop and with my table saw sled, whittle off 3 30 seconds of an inch all the way around on the small drawer fronts and then on the big boys. And once those were trimmed, I took a 1 16th of an inch round over bit and went all around each front and then finished it off by hand just to ease those other corners. And then it was playtime. Jerry and Lola getting in on the action. And now it was time to prime. Benjamin Moore Inselex Aqualock Plus. I do like this primer quite a bit. It sprays nicely, it dries pretty fast, sands nicely. And as you can see here in my technique, I'm working the bottoms first in both directions, and then I spin it over on top of a little board with four screws sticking out. Since you never see the back of the drawer front, you can have little pinholes in it, no big deal. And then I'll spray the front the same as the back and then set that off to dry. So I did that with the two big boys and the two little guys. 
And then it was time for the top coat. I'm using Benjamin Moore Scuff X Duxbury Gray. This will match the same paint color I used on the mudroom. And if you missed that video, I'll leave a link up top for you to go check it out after this. Now, I ran into major problems with this finish. The first two coats went down nice. And then when I went to put the third coat on, I was getting micro air bubbles all over the place. And then when those dry, it looks like sand in your finish. So I sanded and painted and sanded and painted and just could not get it to lay down right so i sent it over to my finisher lazarus who has a much better setup than i do and he was having different but similar problems here's a quick little bug's eye view of the air bubbles and some orange peel not too good and the word around the campfire is the benjamin moore scuff x semi-gloss gives a lot of people problems in my case part of the problem may have been that i didn't let the undercoats dry enough so moisture was trying to escape creating air bubbles in any event what you see me install on site are going to look like poopy guadalupe i'm actually remaking these drawer fronts but they won't be ready in time this video comes out and you might say why not just sand everything back down to bare wood and start over we did and it just doesn't look right so I gotta bite the bullet on this one and make new ones. I'm just glad the drawer boxes don't have to be remade. And at the time, while those were drying, I went back on site to get the face frame prepped and ready for paint. This will be brushed, so I shouldn't have any issues with this. I also needed to add some filler strips for the drawer slides, which will pad them out flush with the inside of the face frame. I also added a quarter inch piece on the bottom to build up the slide because I'm going to be installing some lateral stabilizers, which requires some extra room on the bottom so it doesn't rub on the bottom of the cabinet. We'll get to that in a moment, and I'll show you exactly why I'm going to use these lateral stabilizers. And now is as good a time as any. You see that wiggle wiggle when you pull this out? Well, my drawers shouldn't wiggle wiggle. They need to roll. But before I show you how to install the lateral stabilizers, I'm gonna get these upper drawer slides in, get my drawer in there, tested, fitted, make sure there's no problems there. And then we can move on to the pain in the rear installation of this hardware the ZST686TU01. So there's several parts to this. This one you can see here says R for the right-hand side of the back slide. This is for the left, hence the L. You can see on the back of the slide, there's this little notch cut in there, and that is where this slides into place, kind of locks in there, and then snaps into place on the back of your slide. Then this orange tab pushes all the way in to lock it in place. And in case you missed that, here's the right side, lock it in that tab, and then the orange tab locks it in place. Now, according to the instructions, your gear rack length, that's right, we're talking gear racks here. So my slides are the 563 by 305 b so my gear rack length needs to be 13 and 1 of an inch long. So using my tape measure, I mark those off and then cut them down at the miter saw and then we'll head over to the bench for some more assembly. You can see these little fins or flippers or flaps on each side attached to the gear rack have these little plastic tabs that will go into the notches on the underside of the drawer slides. So we'll put one in, slide it and snap it into place and then follow with the other side, or in this case, the back of the slide. Luckily, these slide up and down that gear rack to give you the correct position. And luckily these can be removed if you want to. So after the first one was done, I take my vast experience and move over to the second one. This one went in a little bit easier. Lock and load front and back and then flip her over. And there we go, those two are installed. Now the next thing on the instructions I didn't pay too much attention to was there's a minimum setback for the inside of the cabinet because those little connectors need to slide all the way back. And as you can see, the cabinet back impedes on such movement. And I drew a pencil line here to illustrate how much it needs to go back and that's about a quarter of an inch now the cabinet back is a half inch, so I'm just using an oscillating multi-tool here and removing and notching out those sections where those need to be so I get free flow of movement. Once that's done, I can reinstall the slides. And as you can see, those little gear mechanisms nestle in nicely. Then I could finish installing the upper drawer slides as well before moving on to the next step, which as the instructions say, is to cut the linkage rod to length. So I take my opening width and minus 11 and 23 30 seconds, which gives me 23 and 29 30 seconds, which I round up to 24, and then I could cut my linkage rods to that length. Fun stuff. Now into each end of the linkage rod goes these long plastic P-tones that take a little bit of force to get them all the way seated in the rod. 
one end and then the other. And then with those successfully inserted, we could insert the rod into the long tab sticking out of each side of the back of the slide. And then these little end caps are kind of locking plastic washers snap over. And what that does, it prevents that rod from being able to be pulled off. Now we could install a drawer box and see how well these work. Well, I guess we'll install both drawer boxes first. Uh-oh, wait, that's no good. Houston, we have a problem. Hmm, something must be wrong. Let's see what it is. Ah, see that gear track isn't locked into that tab on the back of the slide. See guys, I'm showing you how to troubleshoot these things when something goes wrong. I don't know what I did or how I screwed that up or how I got the bottom one incorrectly, but I had to take the whole slide off and make sure that that gear rack length slides in between those notches. Now we're flowing. Now we could reinstall and try this again. Oops, forgot about the linkage rod. That snaps on easily enough. All right, here we go, take two. Drawer on slides, lock into the tabs, pull out and no wiggle wiggle. Nice. All right, crisis averted. And with all that sorted out, I could get to hand brushing the face frame. I had no issues with the semi-gloss here using a brush. I actually used a foam brush and a bristle brush. No issues whatsoever. I ended up putting three coats on there, trouble free. And while that was drying back at the shop, I could drill the holes for the hardware in the smaller drawer fronts. These just get brass knobs. Pretty straightforward install, you might think, but not so fast. I'll show you in a minute the problem we ran into. But first, poor little Jerry had a rough day and was pretty tuckered out. All right, since I'm reusing the existing small drawers, you can see they have all these little dividers and there's that middle divider that is right in the middle of the drawer, which prevents you from tightening the screw in the back of the knob. Now what I'm doing here is there are two screws protruding through that I am pushing against to make two indentations on the back of the drawer front so I can pre-drill the mounting holes to mount the actual drawer box to the drawer front. And then I'm pushing a screw through to the drawer box itself where I'm going to cut a little recess here here. And in that recess will be the head of the screw on the back of the knob. You could recess the screw head into the back of the drawer front, but that could potentially weaken it since it's only in half inch MDF. And even though I'm 99% sure I'm not going to be using these drawer fronts, I want to show you how I'm going to install the brass drawer poles. What I have here is just some green tape laid out. These are six inch poles, so I'm using a marking knife to score the line, which gives me a nice crisp layout reference. To eliminate any tear out, as well as give me a nice flat reference surface for the router plate to ride on, I clamp on two sacrificial blocks on each side, make sure they're perfectly level with my drawer fronts, set the height of my bit to the thickness of the drawer pull and then it's basically staying between the lines i try to get close to but not close enough where i might go over i'll come back and clean these up with a chisel gradually getting closer to my layout lines until everything is nice and clean and square and then we could install the poles these are from rejuvenation small little hardware company out in portland oregon i mark where the holes are and then i will pre-drill because these come with brass screws which are very soft so i want to make sure i pre-drill these holes and then i actually use some steel screws to pre-thread the holes just to make sure nothing funky happens and i don't break a head off i also use a little paste wax for some lubrication that helps the screws go in much easier as well and with that all wrapped up i could pack everything up and head back to the job site for the final install and with a decent night's rest and a large cappuccino, I was ready for the final install. First was to pop these smaller drawer fronts on. If you remember, I had already pre-drilled the backs based on the screw heads that were already in the drawer. So this was just a matter of popping these on and screwing them home. And then for the larger drawers, I pre-drilled and countersunk holes from the inside making sure that my screws would go into the actual frame of the drawer front and not the panel. Once those were drilled, then I could use my 332nd spacers, pop those down on the face frame and fit my drawer front in there. Just use a couple of quick grip clamps to hold the drawer front to the drawer box while I secure it with the screws. I used a total of six screws, three across the top and three across the bottom. And then for the top drawer, I used double-sided tape 
I applied tape to the drawer box itself, as well as to the back of the drawer front, threw my 332nd spacers in there, and then I could drop the drawer front on and push it onto the drawer box itself, creating a strong temporary bond until I could get a clamp on there and then finally secure everything with screws. And then the last step were the poles, which I had just installed the night before, so this was just a matter of putting those screws back in there. Now, when you purchase most high-end traditional hardware, they come with slotted screws. They're not Torx, they're not Phillips, they're slotted, which are a pain. But one little tip I've picked up over the years, if you use a rubber band to attach to the tip, that prevents it from falling out of the screw head every three seconds or on every turn. So maybe that will help avoid some frustration for those of you that install this kind of hardware. So there you have it. What was supposed to be a relatively simple cabinet renovation turned into a bit of a nightmare because of the painting issue, even now it's still just, it's a little tacky. I, I don't think this is ever gonna dry. So I may try to salvage these ones, but ultimately I'm probably going to have to make new ones. But right now it's still a functional space for the client. Big drawers for all kinds of storagey things. Up top, kind of the same as it was before, but with new drawer fronts. So that's a wrap. I'm not really messing with all these drawer reveals and everything too much right now because it's all gonna get replaced. Time to go oil my knees. Oh, jeez. Huh. And don't forget to support me and little Jerry here by supporting the sponsor of this video, Fishing Clash. Use the QR code on screen to download the game or check the link in the description below. And don't forget to use my unique gift code, Keith, to get $20 worth of free gear. Where you going? Where you going?